Record. So a lot of people ask who Mothma was. Well, that wasn't his real name. The real Mothma was a knight, um, a medieval knight, and he got um, he got killed in the tower, the Great Tower of London. Um, there was also a guy called Bergier who also got killed, blooded to death. But the Mothma that we're talking about started out in the 1960s and his real name was not Mothma. His real name was George... George Simons. There you are. Um, and obviously he thought the name was way too, ma ma way too mainstream. And he basically... Um, he went to these people and um, he was blessed by the stars and all the rest of it. Now, Mothma was a great traveller of old. When we say that, we know we're talking time traveller. We're talking great conspiracist. And he started an organisation called the Bewilderment which unfortunately has been banished. Um, due to its publications. You've probably read on the Project X pages and the... Um, and... Um, a book that was called Nowhere Time. Um, but in actual fact, um, Mothma's actual findings are from um, the, a book called The Ministry of Works. Now, it's not a book you'll find easily um, because... Uh, of all of the the findings that are in it and um, the book was buried uh, it's a great book of old and it was buried um, you know long ago it was buried you won't find it anywhere it's a book you won't find and it's a book that no one has ever found. But they've rewritten it from some of the ancient scriptures. And it talks about um, some of the rooms, some of the ancient rooms that Mothma used to spell out his own name. And um, one of the... Um, one of the... Uh, Accents was actually done in... It was all different forms of alpha, alphabet. Um, his name was actually supposed to be... Uh, 30 syllables long. Uh, look, you know, written because it was done in a certain hieroglyph. And... Mothma worked for many people. He built his own time machine and traveled backwards and forwards in time. And then he'd had enough of that. And he basically um, wanted to look at cracking like different codes. Phantom was another like different code and he wanted to find out what that was. And uh, there was many, many different things he wanted to do. And the first thing he wanted, well, one of the things he wanted to do was to find um, one of the, you know, he wanted to find things that were linked, you know, things that were linked to this and linked to that. And Mothma created 
the School of Wonders, which taught people how to use time. And because time is like water and sand, it moves. They were using different things to measure in time, but the one thing that, that Mothma always used was sand, a grain of sand. Um, he also built a spacecraft that could travel through radio waves. Uh, and, but of course the reason it was never launched was because um, there was that much um, radioactive uh, there was that much radiation that even just being that spacecraft um, you would die of radiation poisoning it was never really thought properly, so the spacecraft was taken in and they rebuilt it and they launched it. Unfortunately, though, um, the US military stole the spaceship and they used it for their, for their own needs. So there you go. Mothma's secret spacecraft was stolen from him. And they were going to return it to him just before, uh, just after he died. Strangely enough. Now, um, Mothma's work, you've got to understand, like, Mothma's work with these organisations you know, was to help other people. He worked for alien um, organisations and tried to get a um, an organisation of whistleblowers together. All these whistleblowers are coming forward now. They're kind of against... Everybody is against what the mainstream is doing. Um... And the government is only seeing these people as a community right now. And there is a vast community. There is a vast community. I tell you now, there is a vast community of people that have their own experiences that bring them together. And that's where it all um, collaborates. Um, there were hippies in the end of the 60s beginning of the 70s um, that were making all kinds of things and there were people that were pretending to be hippies a mothma went into um, a forest grabbed a load of people um, and said, here, um, you're nomads, you can travel around the world. And he said to them, look, when they, when they know what you're doing, you must change. You must literally, you must live in a different place every time. And he used the underground world, which a lot, uh, a, he made an underground word, which a lot of people use, and it was called process. We use it now as a brand new word because process now to the underground is very different to what process was quite a few years ago. Process is metamorphosis. Process is movement. Process is dealing with change. Change is such a big thing and change is never understood and it's not meant to be understood. God invented change well before man. There you go. It's, it's something that's been there longer than it should have been. 
And so anyway, Mothma, Mothma hired these hippies and said, right, you're nomads. And said, right, you are the process movement. Not the process church, that's a different thing. The process movement and the process movement were literally um, changing other people. It was, it was the literally... Um, they even changed the Hell's Angels. There were people that didn't want to be Hell's Angels anymore. They wanted to be um, Mothma's people. Um, and because... Um, I mean, there is theories out there that one of these people Mothma hired invented the magic bullet we won't go into that now uh, but anyway these people they were very intelligent people they were eccentric they were weird but they were people that literally um, changed other people and they um they then created this metamorphosis. You know, uh, Hell's Angels on motorbikes didn't want to be Hell's Angels on motorbikes anymore. They wanted the motorbikes, but they didn't want to be Hell's Angels. And they created another... Um, they became the metamorphosis movement. And they, um, they were also a sub-movement of the process movement. And they helped the process movement. In fact, they, there was people out there that went and, and, and pushed the movement. You know, there was these gypsies in caravans, you know, these fortune tellers, and they came and they said, hey, hey, you guys, want to hitch a ride? And people would say, yeah, yeah, we'll hitch a ride. And they would hitch a ride to the far sides of towns, to places where no one else would go. And they would go and teach people. They would set up kinds of all different kinds of things and people were living and and okay they were squatting when it was cold but living when it was uh you know and um people were all um the whole thing was about dealing with change dealing with you know dealing with the road um, you know, uh, and there was some people that were dirty, but they were the nicest people on earth. They were absolutely they, they, this because they what they wanted is to they thought well, if you're dirty, you'll be judged. You know, still happens at this moment. You know, if if you if you have mud on your face, you'll be judged. And these people, that's what they did. Um, and there were these people, and they were the, probably the most dirtiest people. Um, they lived in the most, you know, like a squalor, if you will. But, you know, um, they were the nicest people. You know, they would help other people. You know, on the outside looking in, you'd think, gosh, these are the poorest people. But in actual fact, they had like a, a disguised slum. And in that slum, they had really nice houses. You know, really... And it was like a well-to-do background, but these were not well-to-do people because they were living differently. Um, and there was people living in all kinds of different things, uh, but they, they just didn't want to live like normal people lived. And Mothma came and said, you are the subterraneans. There you are. There's a new word, subterranean. You are subterraneans. Yeah, and that word had, had come from the deep south. You know, when Mothma went to work in the deep south, and uh, then he went to the to the north. Uh, sorry, not the north. He went to um, a part of the Middle East where slavery was a big thing. 
and still is today modern slavery is huge and you know there's child trafficking and all the rest of it but um, Mothma said no I free you people you work for me right and so he took them out to um, America and in America he said right I want to do an an, uh, uh, an organisation which studies UFOs right uh, you guys can study UFOs um, the rest of you I want you guys doing other things I want you to teach other people what how to be free and he said it's it's a big thing it's you have to work it out and it's, I mean that was the thing you know that was the underground way you know because the mainstream would have gone oh yeah freedom's this and freedom's that well actual well, that's a fact. Um, you're only getting a small portion of freedom. Um, you know, and Mothma kind of went away. And um, so he taught those people. And then coming back, there was these people, oh, yeah, we know what this is. We know what that is. Um, and then Mothma would say, well, hold on. If you think that it's that, this is that, and that is this, then what's that? You know, these people will think you're at the mainstream, will think you're on drugs or something if you don't explain to them properly what's going on. And military organisations caught wind to it and they caught light. And Mothma went away in, into uh, Africa. Um, he had a bunker built over there and he lived there for years. And then when he came back in 94, 95, um, he ran a project to discover new UFOs and try and see if the we could um, rebuild any technologies. Trying to see if we'd, if we'd learnt something, basically. And he'd been on Area 51 and as soon as he came off there, um, now he wasn't shot on sight because he was helping them out. So it's like, you know, if you're helping somebody, why shoot them there and then? No, he was shot literally six miles away from Area 51. His body wasn't found anywhere near an Area 51. But the conspiracy theories are all over this, you know. Now, what happened after that was uh, the Ministry of Defence uh, took his body and um, they checked it for all kinds um, I mean he didn't die instantly you know so um, and what they found what you know these um, investigators when they did an investigation do you know what they found in his blood Radiation. Lots and lots of radiation. Um, and they, the, the Americans thought, oh, well, this guy is, is toxic, basically. You know, and his people are toxic. So there was the radiation movement, which was like a hippie movement, but a very futuristic um, movement. And these people were then threatened with all kinds of stuff. Um, there was gas blasts, gas blasts, and acid attacks. And caravans were smashed up, and it was terrible. It was really, really bad. And people just didn't live properly, you know. And then what happened was there was like you know huge wars, like people was like you know. Um, this whole thing like um, there was a huge war waging on these people uh, which they called the um, the the riot uh, the race war not the race war the Charles Manson version but a race war a war of underground versus mainstream and they have it now before I end this video right I want to teach you guys something right a bit of underground and education it's happening now 
The uh, underhive is uh, the upper hive, or the upper hand, or whatever, is getting the lower hand, or the lower hive. Um, underground people have to be, uh, have to learn to be dominant. Domination is, domination is what will rule the world. And if the mainstream get this power too soon, then I'm sorry to tell you, but the people who are truly wanting what's what's right, the information that we we need, the information that we want, the thing that we most desire will be taken from us. And the most rich and the most people who are uh, rich um, they'll live the lifestyle they've always wanted to live and lead the lifestyle they've always wanted to lead and this is why um, there is so much aggression and it's already started in, in many many places um, but the main weapon is power, not sex. That's another weapon, but it's a part of the war, you see. You know, having politics, having like politics is a main weapon, but politics isn't the only thing. Oh no, it's what you are. And they've, they've literally... Um, they want you to they want to tear people to pieces and that's what the governments are doing and they're being paid to do it you know um, you know and they're saying well it does matter uh, a lot of these prerogative people are fighting for it does matter if you're this. It does matter if you're that. Um, and they're using, like... Um, there's so many weapons that are being used against us. And we're saying, okay... Politics is your weapon, so it's ours too. Because um, you got your political views. How strong are they? How can we weaken those that have the most strongest of views? You know, you've really got to put a gun to the head and say, right, here's the thing. Uh, you care about your morals, right? You want rules. Well, here's the rule, right? You mainstream people, right? Um... You know, if you're mainstream, um, you shouldn't be caring about, um, you shouldn't be caring about paedophiles going into toilets. Okay? That's thing number one. Oh, and if we're not done with that, right, uh, thing number two is why are we teaching our children to be aggressive? Right? And thing number three, right? Why are we um, why are we Leaving the poor poor and feeding the rich. Another thing, why are we not caring about communities? If you don't care about communities, you're going to rot. If you don't care about building a new lifestyle, you're going to rot. 
So there you go. And that's literally the true thing. And the mainstream... Anyway. Seven, notifi seven notifications. Bigger limb. BBC iPlayer. Mic trigger. Mic lock. Finish recording.